Hey gang, welcome back to another video. Now the use of 3D printed objects in haunts is becoming more common, but they can stand out if the finish isn't quite right. So when my friends at Bones Gulch asked if I would 3D print some minecart wheels for their haunt, I asked if I could do the finishing as well to test out a new technique and to see just how close I could get them to look like the real thing. So let's see how it goes. The first thing I needed to do was to print out the file I was sent for this project. I printed them at a lower resolution to cut down on time and because I knew that they would be outdoors and would likely need some kind of hard coat to help them keep their shape long term. So once I had all four wheels printed, I grabbed a mixing cup, some gloves, and my two-part epoxy and got to brushing on the hard coat. This is a two-to-one mix that kicks off in about five minutes, which is just enough time to get the entire wheel coated. So let's get to it. Once I had good epoxy coverage on the wheel, I grabbed another cup that I had filled with some MDF sawdust that was harvested from my shop vac and started to sprinkle it across the still tacky surface of the wheel. This technique also works with PVA glues or acrylic paints and nearly anything that stays a bit tacky before it's completely dry. And after the first wheel was covered, I coated the remaining wheels and repeated the process until I was happy with how everything looked. Then I gave all four wheels a light dusting to remove any of the excess sawdust and allowed them to fully cure. Now that the parts were cured, it's time to get down to painting. I started, as I often do, with a black base layer of spray paint. I used some black primer that I had left over, but you could use any kind of matte paint for this step. When the black base coat was dry, I grabbed a reddish brown and gave the parts a light dusting to break it up a bit. I always like to layer my paints, but in the end, this step proved to be a bit unnecessary. I just figured I'd mention it since a lot of these techniques are part experience and part experiment. While I waited for that last layer to dry, I grabbed some red and beige acrylic paints and a bit of baking soda and got to mixing. This will be our rust color, and the baking soda will give the paint some body which in turn will give the wheel even more texture and help really sell the rusted look. So once the paint and baking soda were thoroughly mixed, it was time to grab a chip brush and get to painting. Now this paint goes on pretty thick, but you're able to push it around the surface to help build up the texture in places where the rust would form. This is one of those times where it helps to think about how your final piece will be displayed, and how, if it were a real object, would it have been affected by time and the elements. Thankfully, there's tons of reference photos online, so I was able to really get a feel for what a real rusted mine cart wheel would look like after all these years and could apply it to this prop. Clearly, this is a messy job, but trust me, it'll be worth it. Now they're looking better, but they need a pop of color. So I grabbed some bright orange and thinned it with a little bit of water to help it get into all the textures created by the sawdust and baking soda. I also have a spray bottle with some thinned down black paint that I'll use to give the overall paint job a bit more depth. Thank you. 
You can repeat this spray on wash until you reach the desired look, although I found that three seemed to be the sweet spot for this project. And when everything had fully dried, I applied one last pass of my favorite cinnamon colored spray paint in quick light bursts as a final highlight color and these wheels were ready to head out to Bones Gulch. Well, for something that started off as a, I don't know if this will work, I'd say this turned out pretty good. What do you think? Leave me a note down in the comments and tell me what you think of this project. And if you have other ideas on creating texture on 3D printed parts, leave those below too. Well, that's going to do it for this one. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, but most importantly, go make something. <laughs>